Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is going to be lecture 19-2, part A. <clears throat> we are in chapter 6. This is section 1, part 1. <clears throat> so previously, um, we covered basic probability, and we talked about tree diagrams, um, sampling with replacement, without replacement, independent and dependent events, the general multiplication rule, how to compute conditional probabilities, um, <clears throat> testing whether two events are independent or not, using a table to calculate probabilities, the addition rule, and how to uh, do a little counting, such as permutations and combinations. In this chapter, we're going to discuss discrete probability distributions. In order to do that, we're going to have to define random variables, and then talk about the difference between discrete and continuous random variables, uh, talk about probability distributions, especially discrete distributions in this chapter, their properties, um, the mean, how to calculate the mean and the standard deviation or variance. And then we're going to uh, talk about a very special discrete distribution called the binomial distribution, and we'll go over its formula and the mean and the variance of it. So. <clears throat> let's get started, and let's talk about a random variable. <clears throat> so I'm going to give you a definition that's a little different than the book because I believe it's important for us to have a better understanding of a random variable um, <clears throat> rather than just uh, uh, avoid the topic. So here it is, a random variable, and we use small letters, RV. Capital letters mean something different. Uh, a random variable assigns a real number to every outcome in a sample space. And I abbreviate sample SPL. If you remember, a sample space, and we use capital S for this, is a collection or a set of all the possible outcomes in some statistical process or activity. And so here's a, an example that's not a common example. So hopefully it will give you a good idea of what we're talking about. A cookie jar, my favorite kind of jar, contains several different types of cookies, and they're listed out for us here. I won't name them, but you can read them. <clears throat> and so there's a total of 20 cookies. Now, there's not a normal or natural ordering to these types of cookies. <clears throat> you may have your preference. I have mine. They, they're probably different. So all we can do is kind of randomly assign a value. And so this random variable, we're going to use capital X, <clears throat> and we're just going to say it's a 1 if we have a chocolate chip cookie, 2 for oatmeal, etc. <clears throat> now, let's list out all the different values of X and the probability of obtaining that value of X. So there's 20 cookies. So if I'm going to randomly select one cookie from there, what is the probability that it's going to be a chocolate chip or that X is equal to 1? <clears throat> well, there's three chocolate chip cookies out of the 20, so it's going to be 3 out of 20. And we can do the same thing with 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And so oatmeal, there's going to be 6 of those out of 20. A white chocolate macadamia nut, only 1. Uh, five peanut butter out of 20, four caramel pecan out of 20. Are you hungry yet? I am. Uh, one uh, toffee out of 20. <clears throat> and if we total all these up, what do you think we're going to get? Well, three plus six is nine, plus one is 10, plus five is 15, plus four is 19, plus one is 20 over 20, which is equal to one, which is the probability of the entire sample space which is exactly what we expect. So, <clears throat> the probability that we're going to get one of these types of cookies if we select from this jar of cookies is is <clears> the <throat> probability of one. We're definitely going to get one. Okay. Well, we can look at this and kind of see this is actually a probability distribution, a discrete probability distribution, because the values of x are discrete, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, <laughs> And the probabilities for each of the values are between 0 and 1, and that's, that's the definition of a, of a probability, so to speak. So these are all between 0 and 1, and they add up to 1. 
So we're going to learn that those are the, probabil uh, the properties of a discrete probability distribution. <clears throat> so let's take a different example now. We're going to take a random sample of 50 adult hens, which are female chickens, and count the number of eggs that each produces in a week, seven days. <clears throat> and so we have that three laid no eggs, four laid one, five gave two, five had three, six of them had four, six of them had five, nine had six, and 12 had seven. <clears throat> and so we want to let our random variable x be the number of eggs laid in one week <clears throat> by a hen <clears throat> or one female chicken. So this is what we call an identity function. So a random variable is actually a function. So for every value in the or every outcome in the sample space, it's going to assign a, a value, a real number, to that outcome. Okay. Well, in this case, if we let x be the number of eggs that uh, a hen lays in one week, then we're going to get numbers like we've got 3, we've got 4, we've got 5, 5, 6, we've got um, 4, <clears throat> 5. Uh, so the number of eggs, <clears throat> right? So, oops, I'm circling the wrong thing here. Oops, not what I want to do. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to undo this to keep from... Okay, <clears throat> so, oops, buy a hen. And so, <clears throat> no eggs, one egg, two egg, three eggs, four eggs, five eggs, six eggs, or seven eggs. Those are the values of x. <clears throat> and <clears throat> so I'm going to undo the circling so it's a little neater here. And now I know that there's going to be 50 hens, so each of these numbers, the denominator is 50. So I can go ahead and set that up for each of these. <clears throat> and then uh, no eggs is the same as zero eggs, and three hens out of 50 did that. Four laid one egg, so four out of 50. Five <clears throat> had two eggs. Five of them had three eggs, six of them had four, another six had five, uh, nine laid six eggs, and twelve laid fifty eggs. And if I total this up, <clears throat> sure enough, I get fifty over fifty. So this is one, and again, this is the probability of the entire sample space. <clears throat> so let's formally talk about a random variable, a discrete random variable. <clears throat> it's a random variable for which the underlying characteristic that we're measuring is discrete. We talked about this back in chapter one. So something's discrete if it's finite, just as the number of eggs here are. It's one through seven. So there's a finite number. <clears throat> or it's countably infinite. And this is difficult for some students to uh, grasp. So let's do an example of that. <clears throat> and so we have a 20-sided die, and we're going to roll it until we get a 20 10 times in a row. I'm going to make this difficult to get. <clears throat> and let x equal the number of rolls to get the 10th um, value of 20 uh, in a row at a time. <clears throat> and so the values x can take has to be 10. We can't get 10 rolls of 20 in less than 10 rolls. <clears throat> so we start at 10, then 11, then 12, and so forth. And this is such a difficult feat that um, we could go on and on and on and not get this. So theoretically, it could take an infinite number of rolls to obtain 10 in a row that were 20. <clears throat> so that's an example of a countably infinite um, val a random variable. So we can count at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We can keep counting, but it could keep going on forever before we got there. All right. Now, continuous random variable. Again, it's a random variable for which the underlying characteristic that's being measured is continuous. Some examples of this are um, mass or weight, <clears throat> anything to do with distance like height, uh, width, etc. Um, anything that has to do with uh, distance also includes area. That's the square or the product of two distances. So area, um, the product of three distances can be uh, volume, 
pressure, voltage, if you want to talk electricity, um, resistance, current, all of those are uh, related in their um, <clears throat> um, continuous values. So let's take an example where we take a random sample of 12 volt batteries. So they're supposed to be 12 volt and we measure their actual voltage. Now I didn't say these are new. So we're gonna let the random variable X be equal to the actual voltage. <clears throat> and to be safe, I said, well, if they're completely depleted, then they'll have zero volts. And they're gonna be targeting 12. I doubt we're gonna find any that are greater than 13 volts. <clears throat> so let's say that X can take a value anywhere between zero and 13. Now our voltage meter might only be able to um, <clears throat> measure certain uh, to three decimal places or two decimal places, but voltage is continuous. It can be any value, okay? So we'll stop here for this video and then pick up here next time and talk more about um, the probability distributions. <clears throat> so please make sure you update your formula sheet. Remember, it's your formula sheet, and you can have definitions of symbols. You can have what you need on there, little explanations to make sure that you can use this and it's useful for you. If you have questions, as always, please ask me. I'm happy to help you. <clears throat> so please take care of yourself. Stay safe because we want to see you here next time.